Meatball, did you hear the news? Did you hear the news? AMC is almost at $8. We are watching it live. And if you haven't had a pleasure of meeting Andrew or Meatball or the Meatballers Army quite yet, we are uh, telling you live exactly what is going on with AMC, our our technical analyses, our price predictions, as well as some important news about exactly why AMC and uh, New York's uh, new announcement about theaters reopening might just be the first step of Hollywood's comeback, as well as understanding whether or not AMC is a ray of light or a false dawn. Now, the last times that I did a technical analysis here, I drew these levels of technical support and resistance. These are just pa previous prices that AMC either bounced off from uh, because that is support, that is a price that people thought would be undervalued and decided to buy, or a price that it was rejected by, as in a price that people thought it would be overvalued to buy that and decided to sell. Now, a, a couple of different parts about this specific chart that you see, the purple line is the 200-day exponential moving average, gives us a macro view of exactly what bullish and bearish momentum AMC currently has, and with the blue line is a little bit of a micro view, the 15-day moving average instead. Uh, what we also have here on the, on the bottom part is one of my favorite uh, probably my favorite indicator is the relative strength index. Now, as we are talking, it is wavering at that $8 mark, and we just passed it. So this is exactly what I've been predicting for the last three days, that the next level of technical uh, resistance and support is $8.08. .08. Now, why is this so important? It's because previous levels of resistance might turn into future levels of support and vice versa. And as we can predict the market as such, these are the milestones to beat. Now, a lot of people have been considering that AMC looks a lot like its performance back in January of, 20, uh, of 2021. Just a month ago, it was performing up and down volatil uh, in terms of volatility, pretty high, but it is very similar in terms of right before the squeezing. So is this the squeezing? Have we started looking at the squeezing and what will happen to AMC as we pierce through this next level of support and resistance? Let us cover some news. And I want to make sure that uh, I'm keeping the price of the stonk on the bottom, but I want to also make sure that you understand that this is not financial advice. This is just uh, one uh, YouTuber's opinion, and uh, hopefully that you guys take everything with a grain of salt and understand that uh, it's important for you guys to do your own research. So I am trying to put the price of AMC here. Almost done. And there it is. So we've just surpassed that $8 mark right on this live stream. If you guys are curious about when I do live streams, how you guys can talk to me directly, uh, this are all interesting questions that I am, uh, can uh, try and answer in the comments down below because I do respond to every single comment. So. For most people across the globe, the movie-going experience appears to be a dim memory from a different era. However, New York cinema lovers will once again be soon sitting can reopen in the first week of March. And as the biggest movie theater uh, uh, operator in New York City, this is great news for AMC. The beleaguered theater chain has 13 locations in NYC, which it plans to open on March 5th in accordance with the required cleaning protocols and 25% capacity limitations. Now, AMC has very, very interesting and strict cleaning protocols, which I did cover in a previous AMC video, which I'll link down below. The reopening is set to provide a ray of light for the struggling company, says the Wedbush analyst Michael Pactor. We think that there is significant pent-up desire to go out to the movies, and this could potentially add meaningful to AMC's March Q1 and Q2 results given that AMC's NYC theaters are some of its highest performing theaters in its domestic circuit, said the five-star analyst. Should this entice other densely populated areas to reopen, this could in turn entice studios to maintain Q2 to Q3 release slate plans. On the other hand, says Pactor, the desire to head out to the movies might be overcome by caution while cinema goers wait until they are vaccinated. And the transmission rates decline. With this in mind, uh, Pactor says he does not expect attendance levels to begin to normalize until July at the earliest, which is not that far away if you are holding on to your attendees. Uh, for the upcoming quarters, Pactor thinks that expectations for Q2 might 
currently be overly optimistic as he anticipates some slated releases will ultimately get pushed back to 2H21. While uncertainty remains concerning Q3, looking uh, further ahead, Pactor is more optimistic. We think that the domestic box office will return to full swing in Q4 to, uh, 21 with the potential upside to our current estimates given massive pent-up demand for seeing movies with friends or dates out of the home once it is safe to do so. Based on all of the above, Pactor says uh, AMC is rated a neutral hold, but the analyst might as well have said sell because he thinks the stock currently at $7 could drop to $2.50 within a year. Well, that analyst doesn't clearly understand the power of the ape army. Of course, Pactor, neither Pactor or my opinions are supposed to be financial advice. The view from the rest of the street is hardly any rosier based on two holds and one sell. AMC has a moderate sell consensus rating. That's a 58% downside. Should be 325 average price target met over the next year. So moderate sell uh, is one of the possible, uh, I don't know, is it a rating or is it advice? But it's one of the things that they want to uh, brand it on. You can also see the kind of ratings on Weeble, which is a technical app that I was using. Go ahead and drop uh, a... Uh, I'll click on the link down in the description for that Weibo app uh, to get also the same type of rating consensus. However, this is not quite it because we have to understand that uh, AMC is planning on making a comeback with Hollywood. And Hollywood is a large institution with plenty of people that have big uh, dreams and big ideas as well. After a nearly a year of collecting dust, New York City's movie theaters can finally reopen. Theaters in the city, the second biggest film market in the U.S. behind only Los Angeles, will reopen at March 5th at 25% capacity. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced yesterday masks and social distancing will be mandatory. Theaters which shut down in New York City in Mar mid-March last year are among the last indoor business to be allowed to reopen as state officials are reportedly concerned about airflow. Now, remember, the beginning of the first, uh, uh, the first um, disease transmission uh, was in a Chinese restaurant with the AC blowing in, uh, in a specific direction. So that is something to be concerned about. All theaters that reopen will be required to meet enhanced ventilation standards, according to a press release from Cuomo's office. The state will allow theaters in some countries to reopen, some counties to reopen with those same restrictions in October, but so far only about a quarter of the state's 280 theaters have returned to operation. So is this the studios, uh, the Hollywood studios first plan? Together, the states of the New York and California account for nearly 20% of U.S. movie ticket sales. New York City reopening its theaters offers a glimmer of hope for an industry that's been devastated by the pandemic, even as film industries in other countries like China flourish. Uh, with New York back and up and running, U.S. studios might be inclined to hold tight on their late spring and early summer release dates rather than continue postponing them. Disney's Black Widow and Universal's F9, both expected to be among the highest grossing films of the year, are tentatively scheduled for theatrical release in May. So this is, these are the deadlines to think about, May and July. With shares of AMC Entertainment, the biggest theater chain in the U.S., almost jumped 15% yesterday during the news. In fact, it jumped another 15% the day before. In a statement, AMC CEO Adam Aaron said it was an important step towards the restoring the health of the movie theater industry. And all, of, uh, all 13 of its theaters will be open in the city on March 5th. Uh, it, the company had flirted with bankruptcy in the recent months, but it didn't, which is why all of the, uh, the crazy short squeeze sh uh, shenanigans have even happened in the first place. Uh, whether or not theaters can operate profitably at 25% capacity depends on their size and their funding. Most major chains, which have about 200 seats per screen on average, are likely to, ab to be able to keep the lights on with such capacity restrictions, but many art house independent cinemas, which have far fewer seats, well, they can't stay open to, uh, while meeting that same benchmark. Um, and that is unfortunately the case for a lot of the smaller theaters, not the case for our, our main Tendi winner, AMC. Uh, the National Association of Theater Owners, which is also called NATO, uh, applauded the uh, New York News but pushed for loosened restrictions. Well, let's not push too hard on, uh, on life or death situations with people who just want to watch movies and eat a, a bucket of popcorn. Um, they look forward to expanding the capacity from 25 to 50% in the very near future so that theaters can operate profitably. Don't forget, one bad outbreak and you're back to 0%, so don't push the envelope too hard. Uh, theaters are currently open in 49 of 50 U.S. states, New Mexico being the lone holdout, and most are operating between 25 and 50% capacity. 
Oh, New Mexico doesn't. New Mexico does not like movies. Um, most states require moviegoers to keep their mask on under seats, whether they're not eating, whenever they're not eating or drinking. But it's unclear how much of that's being enforced. Can you imagine people just sitting in the like in the back and be like, "Hey, put your mask on." It's it's a movie. How are you going to be able to enforce that? Uh, no U.S. COVID-19 outbreaks have been traced to movie theaters in October. Japan was able to ease a capacity restrictions on theaters, but the country also had significantly less transmission of the virus than the U.S. does now. Japan has not traced any outbreaks to theaters yet. Uh, either. Uh, Hollywood still has a long way to go to recover from its year-long pause, but if ever there were a sign that better days are ahead for studios and theaters alike, it's that New York City is finally going back to the movies. Well, I hope you guys understood a little bit more about the news of AMC and exactly what analysts as well as the industries are hoping to be able to make happen in the next few weeks to the next few months. If you guys like that video, make sure to slam that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And for meatball's sake, go ahead and ch consider checking out one of the links down below. Any of them help support the channel with no cost to you. And for now, but not for forever, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day.